Okay, I'm Matt Verjanic. Uh, I'm going to show you today how to make this trivet using wine corks and a frame we made out of maple and it's got an inlay banding in it. Okay, um, I make and sell the inlay bandings at www.inlaybanding.com and this is a zebra wood banding with ebony edges and this of course is a piece of curly maple that's been stained and I'll be showing you how to do that. You need a bunch of corks. There's like, uh, well, four, I think 32 corks in there and uh, make a nice gift and that's what I intend to do with it. Okay, we're going to start out with four pieces of maple and each one of these are about 20 inches long maybe a little bit more uh, these are an inch and three-eighths wide you can make them wider narrower or whatever and it's like three-quarter inch maybe a little bit maybe 13 16 inch stock and I've chosen this curly maple which is pretty nice and I've cut a rabbit in the back to accept the plywood back, I've cut, there's a piece of plywood that will fit in the back and it'll be like a frame. So I've already pre-datoed them and pre-milled two pieces of which I'll get four pieces from. If you look at this, I've drawn with a, a 45 degree triangle approximately where my uh, uh, the miters are going to be so that I know where to lay my banding. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to use a zebra wood banding which is nothing but zebra wood and it has black edges and the reason for the black edges uh, will be apparent later as when I stain the the uh, the maple. Uh, you always want to try to stain curly maple. It'll bring out the, the grain a little better. So when I stain the curly maple, I'm going to mask off about in the middle of those little black lines. I'm going to mask this banding off so this banding will not stain. And we'll, we'll go through that. But that's the way it's going to look. Something like that. Okay, I've set up a very simple uh, setup on my router. I've got a 3 8 inch router bit in here. The banding is actually 0.410 inches wide, so it's about a 32nd wider than 3 8 So what I'm going to do is I'm going to route one pass in here, and I've already done this in a practice piece, so I, I know that it's going to be the, the correct depth and the correct distance before I do it in my... Uh, my real piece of wood. Okay, I've routed one pass in here, and as you can see, the banding's too wide. It won't fit. So I'm going to set up a, put a shim between here. Now this shim is a 32nd of an inch thick. So you just have to experiment. Now the banding fits perfectly. It's nice and snug. Okay, if you need to um, make your shim a little bit wider, if your slot's not wide enough, you can add tape to it. Put a strip of masking tape on there and move it out until you get the correct width. Okay, you notice I've cut a piece, a couple of pieces of banding, pre-cut them, and I'm going to use regular woodworkers glue in here yellow glue it's it's actually tight bond too and we're going to 
get that banding in there nice and tight. Well, it fits good. Had a rag with me. Okay, you notice I put down a piece of wax paper. It's just plain old cut rate, cut rate wax paper to keep the glue, any glue squeeze that comes out from sticking to my call, which is my bench right here. Okay, I'm just going to invert that, use some spring clamps, keep this glued down for, oh, maybe 15 or 20 minutes. Okay, I've gone ahead and sanded these. As you can see, it's nice and smooth. And you can sand these later if you like. I like to do it before I miter them. Okay, then I mitered these corners. I'll miter these two. And this distance from this corner to this corner is 7 inches. So it has to be exactly seven inches to get the corks that you'll see later to, to fit correctly. Okay, I've mitered the corners on these and I've glued it up in this little jig and if you had your basic uh, skills for getting the all these consistent widths and thicknesses then your corners and your bands are going to match up nicely. Okay, I've glued in the bottom, and the bottom should be strong enough to hold the miters in the corners together without reinforcement. I've also taken and rounded the edge over using a quarter inch round over bit. And I've eased the edges just here with some sandpaper, although, you know, it's really not necessary to do much more than that, as you'll see. Um, the next step is to stain it, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm going to take some blue tape and put it down on a piece of melamine. And this measurement here is about three-eighths of an inch, roughly, to the center of that black stripe. So, yeah! Okay, sorry, it's hollering at the wife there. So now I've got my masking tape that's three eighths of an inch, and I'm going to put it right on that there. I'm going to go all the way around with that, and then we're going to stain it. Okay, I've stained this, and you can see how nice that curly figure is showing up on that stain and how nice the banding still pops with its natural color. So the next step is to finish it, I'll spray it with some polyurethane and then we'll put the corks in. Okay, so I'll put the finish on it. it looks pretty good. Now time to put the corks in. I just use regular white glue. This is Elmer's glue all in this case. And just throw it in there, spread it around a little bit. Not critical. Okay. And I like to dry fit the corks first because all the corks aren't the same size and sometimes they don't fit or they're too hard to get in there. So we dry fit them and then um, you can try to get them so they so you can read them up and you just put them in there alternating like so oops what am I doing these are in the wrong place anyway you get the idea okay we're all done um, you can eliminate the corks and just use it for a frame or you can make a different size of frame. For the corks the inside of this needs to be 7 inches by 7 inches. If it's a little bit smaller you can always cut the corks down using a razor knife. Um, but anyway that's all there is to it.
makes a nice gift.